Well, hello. Welcome to the first uh, video, Dividend Cafe of 2018. I'm sitting here warm and cozy in the New York office where right outside my window, it is literally as bad of a blizzard as I've ever seen. But of course, I've been in Southern California for 43 years. So the idea of snow pouring all around is not exactly something this California kid is used to. Uh, I have an office right now where it is 68 degrees and sunny, and I have an office that I'm sitting in where it is 7 degrees and storming. So I guess you could wonder if my uh, investment prowess is as solid as my weather timing, but I digress. We do have a lot of things we want to cover, as always. Uh, first and foremost, wishing you a very happy new year and welcoming you to 2018 as the markets have done. As a matter of fact, the weather paradigm is sort of a nice metaphor for a lot of the things that we want to cover pertaining to markets this year. We, we didn't have a lot of different seasons, so to speak, in the markets last year. We, we had a risk-on environment. It stayed risk-on for essentially the entire year. If anybody believes the one or two days that may have had a couple hundred point moves counted as risk-off, then they ought not be investing. Um, and in fact, you had um, an interesting way in which risk-on manifested itself. Some of it very expected and traditional. Emerging markets were up roughly 36%, and you expect that asset class to perform well in a real risk-on environment. You had high yield performing double digits out of the bond market um, with spreads tightening to levels never before seen um, with certain credits. Uh, and yet you had small cap quite substantially underperform large cap um, by a minimum of six percentage points as much as 10 percentage points, depending on what indexes you're exactly looking at. Still a double-digit return, though, in most of those types of asset classes. So, um, yes, it was a one-note season for 2017 with historically unprecedented low volatility a risk-on environment that lasted the vast majority of the year, and now we enter 2018. And you have to wonder, other than the calendar changing, what exactly is, has changed? You still have very accommodative central bank policies, despite their very slow and, 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 and tepid efforts at normalization. Central banks all over the globe are still in an accommodative posture. You have very low inflation. You, you have earnings accelerating, and you potentially have GDP growth, not just accelerating, but maybe about to, to substantially uh, accelerate. So do we believe that the environment for 2018 is going to look the same as 2017? No, we do not. But that's not the same as saying it was a bad envi it's going to be a bad environment this year versus a good environment last year. What I think, back to my weather analogy, is that we're going to have a good 2018 for investors, but we're going to have different seasons. We're going to have a variety of weather conditions, unlike the one note that we had for last year. I don't know when volatility will pick up, particularly downside volatility. I do feel rather uh, emphatically that it will. I wouldn't dare to time it, and I sure as heck wouldn't try to bet on it with a with an investment trade into the VIX or some of these other measurements. But what we would do is just simply prepare for downside volatility with some modest amount of dry powder cash and um, with uh, the expert communicating the expectation so that our client investors are prepared for such a thing, not caught off guard by the reality of downside volatility. And uh, certainly we would want to be in an asset allocation position to take advantage of it if the volatility were to move to the downside beyond uh, 5, 7, 10% level. Uh, anything beyond that, we would want to be in a position to, to act upon it. 
uh, by rebalancing out of some of our fixed income portfolio into our equity allocation. So that would be the theme we'd have. But listen, we have a lot to say about 2018. And I'm in the midst right now completing a pretty exhaustive white paper, summarizing all of last year, presenting our holistic viewpoint coming into this year. So I won't do that in this video now, but I will uh, offer that up here in the next week or so. We're committed to having that by the middle of January. In the meantime, um, I really do believe that the contrarian themes that have driven so much of what I've done for nearly 20 years are, are alive and well. Um, when I hear of $23 billion net, net of all money that came into the stock market last year, $23 billion coming out as the market was making 20% returns and, and higher than that in certain global domiciles and so forth, the, the, um, the reality is, is that a lot of things have moved positively for markets, and yet retail flows uh, do not indicate a euphoric participation and such. Uh, we see certain things where a lot of dumb money is going, but we certainly don't see dumb money coming into the stock market. And, and so what we have to do is just find the right balance uh, whereby we understand that greed is not yet taken over, and yet certain fears are more rational than others. And, and, and as we talk about constantly, our remedy for the tension between fear and, grade, fear and greed is and always will be a thoughtful, deliberative process of asset allocation done on a client-by-client -client basis to appropriately blend the risk and reward characteristics that make most sense for that client. And, and that's what we have to do now. So we're, we're rebalancing so now that we're into the new year and tax consequences for last year well behind us. We're rebalancing and, and we're doing so with an emphasis into small cap, actively considered where we think we can take advantage of corporate tax reform. We are trimming overall equities just to simply reset the risk barometer and then where we wanted to take risk out of the portfolios, given the robust period of time we've had in stock since the uh, end of January 2016, we're looking to de-risk on the bond side, not the equity side. Cutting back a bit on our floating rate bank loan allocation, uh, we've been completely eliminated from high yield, junk credits for some time, and, and looking at bonds that act more like bonds, and yet maintaining the appropriately modest exposures into equities. So that's our focus at this time. Um, please read DividendCafe.com this week. Uh, I will give a video of the exhaustive white paper when it's completed. Um, in the meantime, we're going to keep doing this and, and invite you back to, to hear what we have to say and, and uh, by video each and every week as we've done for a while now, a couple of years. And we encourage you to Reach out with any questions, comments you might have any time so we can address the topics important to you. Those are our comments here for the first week of 2018. Thanks for listening to Dividend Cafe.